Hello and welcome. In this review note, we are going to configure our Palo Alto firewall to forward traffic the way that we want it to. You will have needed to complete the base config practice exercise before this is going to work because we're going to pick up from there. And you'll also want to load up the configuration that you saved at the end of that exercise, assuming that you deleted it. I've already taken care of all of that and I am logged in with an admin session into the firewall. First thing that we're going to do is configure the firewall so that we can actually administer it from our internal zone. So to do that, I'm going to start with going to network and network profiles, interface management. We have allow ping from before. I'm going to add a new one. And this is going to be allow management. And what we're going to do here is allow secure web, secure shell, and also ping. So that means that we'll be able to connect to the firewall either using HTTPS through a web browser or SSH. I'll say OK. And we can see that our profile is now created. We need to apply that to an interface. So I'm going to go to our internal interface, Ethernet 2. And in advanced, I am going to select management profile and allow management. Note that we can only have one management profile on any one interface. Say OK for that. It's also giving us a warning that we're exposing uh, the firewall to administrative uh, access from something other than the dedicated management interface. We'll say OK for that. It's something that we very often do in smaller organizations where we don't have a dedicated management network. The other thing I'm going to do is configure the other two interfaces going to internet and DMZ so that we can ping from there. Sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't, depending on the security posture of the organization. We'll set that up in our case so that we can, so that we can test everything. And we'll say allow ping. And we'll do the same thing for our DMZ. And in order to put that into effect, of course, we have to commit. So I'll select commit, commit that. And once that's finished, when we get back, we'll look at how do we set up the policies to allow the traffic to be forwarded. Excellent, that's done. Now, next thing is policies. I'm going to select on the policies tab. Security policy is the one that we want. And we're going to create three. We're going to create one to allow internal to the DMZ, one to allow internal to the internet, and one to allow DMZ to the internet. I'm going to start by clicking add. This one is going to be internal to DMZ. In my description, I'll just put in allow hosts in the internal zone to access servers in the DMZ. Now, next thing we have to do is specify the source, and we do this by zone. So I'm going to add my internal zone, my destination. We'll add the internet or the DMZ. And on these other tabs, we can look at things like restricting applications. We can restrict URLs. We can change the action, allow, deny, that type of a thing. These we're going to keep with all the defaults, but you know, note that you can get very, very sophisticated with respect to configuring these policies. Okay, for that, we can see our policy is set up and internal to DMZ. Notice that we're not restricting IP, we're not restricting users, we're not restricting devices, although we could do that in all cases same as applications and services. I'll set up the other two policies. This will be internal to internet. For our source zone, we're going to select again internal. And for destination, we're going to the internet.
Again, we won't put any other restrictions on the addresses, users, devices, that type of a thing. Finally, we'll create our DMZ to internet. And as you can probably guess, our source is going to be DMZ and our destination is going to be internet. And that's all we have to do for that. So our three policies are now configured. This is excellent. We need to commit those to put them into effect and then we can try them out. So we'll let that take place. And once that's done, we'll come back and do some testing. Excellent, that's done. Let's go and do some testing. First of all, let's look at VM2. This is the one that's internal. Let's see if we can ping our server that is in the DMZ. And that was successful for one. And there we go for the others. A little bit of a network glitch there, it looks like. Let's try also going to the internet. And that works perfectly fine as we would expect. I mean, it looks like we have a bit of a glitch on the network there someplace. Um, let's switch over to VM1 and see if we can ping the internet, which we set up a policy for, so you would think we could. And we're getting a response back that, no problem. Let's try pinging our internal client. And that is going to time out as we should expect, because we do not have a policy that allows traffic to be initiated from the DMZ into our internal zone. And finally, let's go to our internet server, VM3. We'll try pinging internal first. That is timing out as well, because we do not have a policy allowing traffic from the internet into internal. We can, however, ping the external interface of the firewall, no problem. Let's just to complete everything, see if we can ping the DMZ. And we can see that that's going to time out as well, which makes sense because we do not have a policy allowing traffic from the internet to the DMZ. That is a wrap for the video and for the practice exercise. Don't forget to clean up once you're finished the lab so that it'll be ready for students in the future. Also remember to save and download and then erase your configuration if you need to do that as part of your exercise. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and we'll see you next time.